Hey everyone, today we are opening up to Exodus chapter 28 and we are going to look at verses 31 through 35. We're going to see here a robe that was part of the priestly garments and it had a very bright color. We're going to see a very, very distinguishing color. Um, think about the fact that they're building this tabernacle on the backside of the desert by Mount Sinai. So this, this had a very distinguishing feature the color that the robe was. We're also going to see that there were bells that were part of the priestly garment. Why were there bells on there? Kind of an interesting thing. So let's look here in Exodus chapter 28 verses 31 through 35 today. You shall make the robe of the ephod all of blue. There shall be an opening for his head in the middle of it and it shall have a woven binding all around its opening like the opening in a coat of mail, so that it does not tear. And upon its hem you shall make pomegranates of blue, purple, and scarlet, and all around its hem, and bells of gold between them all around. A gold bell and a pomegranate, a gold bell and a pomegranate upon the hem of the robe all around. And it shall be upon Aaron when he ministers, and its sound will be heard when he goes into the holy place before the Lord, and when he comes out, that he may not die. The bells on this priestly robe that the high priest was to wear. Number one, there was a very bright color. Let me back up. There was a blue robe. That was going to stand out. Okay, a blue robe is going to stand out in the middle of the desert. It's going to stand out uh, as an ornate and, and very uh, iconic color. But then it talks about not only the details of how this robe will be made and how there will be an opening so it can be worn, but it even goes on, and I may not have this exactly right, but it, it kind of strikes me at, at first reading of this when I first read it that, you know, that kind of sounds like there's an opening for the head. kind of sounds like a poncho. Um, <laughs> you know, it kind of sounds like you, you take a blanket and you cut a hole in the top and boom, you know. I would think I'm probably wrong there. It's probably more ornate than that. But there was this very uh, artistic artisanship, uh, workmanship, craftsmanship that went into putting a pomegranate and a gold bell all the way around the hem of this robe. Why was it on there? Why were there bells on this robe? Because when Aaron the high priest went to minister in the holy place, these bells would jingle. Remember, nobody else could go to the holy place but the high priest, and the high priest only once a year, the very place where God dwelt. And if he did not minister worthily, the Lord could strike him down, strike him dead. And so these bells, you know, as he's moving around doing things in there and, and spending time with the Lord, his movement would be heard by the bells. But if you hear no movement and you call out, hey, you know, Joe, are you okay? If you don't hear any noise of the bells and you don't hear anything else, you would know that he had been struck dead. Now later on, when the Jewish temple is built, we're going to see that they, they even do something else. They... They tie a, a rope around the ankle or, or somehow to the person so they could pull them out if they did, in fact, die, if the high priest died while ministering to the Lord. The takeaway, I think, for us today is, is pretty clear. As new covenant believers in Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus Christ has been shed for us and we've been forgiven of our sins. He is our high priest that goes on our behalf and has opened up the most holy place for every single one of us to enter in and enjoy the presence of God I think the application is pretty clear we do not draw near to God in a terror of being killed now we should have a proper fear the Bible talks about in the New Testament about worshiping the Lord and serving him with fear and trembling we should have a proper trembling before the Lord but we don't have to wear a bell and tie a rope or something around our ankle so people know if we've died or not when we've been meeting with God by the grace of Jesus Christ, by His blood, by the perfection that He lived, and the redemption that He accomplished on our behalf, we can draw near to the throne of grace in our time of need, and we can find God's help. We can draw near and abide in the presence of the Lord. 
what an enormous privilege. Father, today we thank you for your word and to be reminded of the simple truth that, Lord, you are holy. But we do not have to be terrified of you. Lord, we tremble before your awesomeness and your might. But, Lord, by the blood of Jesus, we have hope. We have joy. Thank you for your presence, which has been opened up to every single believer. Because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ upon the cross for our sin, if we but believe in our heart that he died and rose again, and confess with our mouth that he is Lord, you hear us, Lord. And whosoever calls upon your name will be saved. You will not turn anyone away who cries out to you for salvation. We thank you, Father, in the name of your precious Son, 